skin is visible, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, since the last sessions we basically differentiate into the different data categories based on is either it's a measurement or it's in values or maybe source of the data. Now today we'll try to cover the basic distribution that from the data we can create and we can get some basic meanings. Okay. So the data, uh, first we try to know that since the beginning discovery of all those techniques, the first techniques that people used to do is one kind of sort one data. Okay. So sorting the data. So how we can sort? We can sort data or maybe arrange the data into some orders. Either it's an ascending order or the descending order. And from the simple or the basic techniques, we created one kind of uh, output display that's called the steam and lip display. So from there, we can easily represent one ba uh, the basic distribution based on this ascending order, the descending order of the data. So how we do this? So this uh, basic the steam and leaf display where each <coughs> leaf represent is nothing but the unit position of your data and steam or uh, maybe a branch of steam represent nothing but yeah, the tenth position or the hundredth position of your data. Okay. It's better if we summarize within the example. Otherwise, those techniques are useful, uh, really useful in understanding when you use the basic example. Say, suppose uh, we have one data technique, say, um, just start number from suppose 80. There is. Suppose 88, those are the different data that we have. They, we distributed this, say 105, then 90, and then 94, 92. I'm trying to write a different data points so we can then sort it based on its uh, orders, okay, and try to put the display into the steam in representation of the steam and leaf display, okay. Say 70, then 99, then 82, then 173, 62, 109. Yeah. Suppose this is all uh, the data point that we have. Now, for the basic and the simplest way, if we want to so order this in the steam and lip display, we can uh, write like This is one separation of the partition that we create to represent where in that position we usually write the tenth position of data. Okay. Tenth. Either it's a tenth or hundred or maybe thousand. Okay. And in that position, we simply write the unit position of the data. Okay, unit position. So it's a you can see it's a basic and the simplest way. And now we sort this. Uh, in the ascending order, the descending order. Right. Suppose, say, for the tenth display, we can see that the minimum, the lowest value we have, only sixty-two. So we can write six here, and the unit position is two. Okay. Now, in this, we can give a separation comma, and if we see, we have a more value in the sixtieth. 
row there is i give there is no value on this history is there so we then skip that and go into the next part okay next is on the seventh yes sir unit position means unit position means this one the unit position value means the okay. last value if 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 uh, if we have the number of 73 then what is the unit position number the unit position number is 3 and the 10th position number is 7 or we can see 70 that's called the seven tenth position na? 7 into 10 plus 3 that you get the exact number na? yeah so this is a 10th position value this is a unit position value that's we represent the number Sir, why we skip 68? Oh, 68 was there. That's why I'm asking nah, if there is any number order. So the, if I have, as I'm ordering from the ascending to this uh, ascending order, from lowest to highest, so this is 62, then we comma and then write the 8. 68, okay? Okay, sir. This is the way of writing. This is the way of representing in the form of steam and leaf display. Okay. This is one technique, but people nowadays don't use it. Okay. Most of the time you can see we have the advanced way to represent the data. But as for our knowledge, if we do learn those techniques, there's different kind of techniques that sometimes you need to draw a different kind of Ogis diagram or the Pareto diagram. That time you may need those techniques. Okay. That's why I'm seeing, uh, showing those kind of things. And in the 70, uh, in the 70 places, you can see what is first is 70, so zero. Then just cross down those numbers, 70. 70 is done. Then uh, 73 was there, so three. Then 79 and was it so this is 79 now next is your in the 80 space <clears throat> now in the 80 space you can tell that there is one then two then if one two done the five then five eight this that in the 90 space, we can see there is a many number like one, two, uh, one, two done, four, zero was also there, zero, one, two, four, nine. Okay. And in the 100th place, we can write here 10. And then there is only two number, like 5 and 10. So this is the basic representation of the uh, stream and display. Now we can see that in which basic idea we can give is that in the which spaces it has more weights. You can see in the 80 and 90, it has more weights as a more number represented than the rest of this number. So uh, one conclusion, one simple conclusion we can bring that in the sample space of the 18 and the 90, we can have the more uh, number de density than the rest of it. But in the now in the general days, we don't use the stream and label display okay. because it, <clears throat> only gives you a basic representation, only gives a basic conclusion, and that's it. There is no more knowledge you can put from that distribution. Okay. Sometimes <coughs> people can give you some decimal number to do that. It gives you the decimal number, then only that tenth place or that number before the decimal, you can take it as the uh, your stem part, this is your stem part. And the decimal number you can give you, you put it as a unit place. Okay. This is the uh, 
simple way to represent the stream uh, stream and leap display for the decimal numbers okay but most of the time this data in generally we start to represent in the group order okay so it's better the next we started to represent this into the groups okay so it can be called as a classify into groups right. where the groups you can create uh, should be in that even measurement even measurement means it if you create a 10 category in between from number 0 to 100 then you can create the 10 category based on the evenly spaced numbers okay from 0 to 10 then 10 to 20 then 20 to 30 that's how you can create different kind of categories okay so uh if there is some group say suppose uh there are some school marks okay then some percentage we can calculate then some percentage we can give it suppose say 60 to uh, 64 Okay, then 65 to the uh, five num phone number 69, then 70 to 74. Okay, then 75 to 79. Yeah. And suppose 80 to 80. Those are the different categories. Okay, now we can put like some number of students who scored in between that category. So suppose there are uh, 12 students who score in between that number. There are suppose 10 students who score in, be uh, in between that group. Okay, say eight and say this is six and suppose four. The number of students between this category. And why you say there is, should be some one data that represents some meaningful value. So suppose for that percentage, people will get some money. Okay, student will get some scholarship. Okay, suppose there will be some amount, say 300 for that. Okay, suppose uh, 350 for that group, then 400 for that group, then 450 and say 500. Okay. Those are some, now you can see, it has some better meaningful representation than the previous one. Okay. And you can have some, uh, if you want to, if you are a board of member, you want to calculate some budget, then you can easily create one total value from that. Okay. You can get the total value, say suppose 3600 and so on. Okay. Now from that, if we uh, measure, this value into some groups, then it will have some better representation. You can create some better values. Okay. So the rule of, if you want to classify into groups, the rule should be, uh, one thing is your group should be in the evenly spaced numbers. You can see, okay. There should be no overlaps between two groups. You can see if you have some unique separations, okay. The numbers should not be overlap. Okay. And there is uh, one, suppose the width, if you want to calculate the width, there is one good way to calculate is that the range you want to decide div uh, divided by the total number of class you want to get, the total number of class of groups you want to create. If you want to create, suppose 10 groups or the 20 group, just divide it with the total number of range. Okay. If you have a uh, total, uh, and the more groups you created, the more frequency it will generate. It. So data will become more uh, huge rather than the little groups you created. But there should be one balance because the less group contain the more category and the more group contains the less category. So the data may be merged in submerged in between those. So it should be in between as a non-biased level. Okay, so you represent the data in the more valid suit. But even as, as the current general current people, we don't use those kind of things. Sometimes you need to create some frequency for that you classify groups and for that reason uh, some statistician may use and 
for that we will go into the next step when distributing the frequency table but apart from it we don't use the stress point to goes is better just simply distributed in the normal distribution and may, uh, from that normal curve we can easily measure through it okay so from that classification we can easily create that uh, good way is the frequency distribution and one more is in this when you classify into this group there should be no ambiguity in this data okay if there there are some uh, obstruction okay some confusion in the placement then it should it should not be ambiguous here okay the data should be unambiguous yes. now The next is, uh, say, frequency, right? The frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is when we uh, distributed the data into different classes and their frequencies. Okay. Say, suppose in that example, this is age. Okay. Age, we can simply distribute to suppose 0 to 10, then 11 to 20. The rule is should be followed. There is, should be no uh, overlap. Then 21 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, right? So suppose uh, 51 to 60 and as not many people live be, uh, the, after that, maybe we can decrease that as the for 20 to 50 then suppose 51 to 70 because not many people was there in apart from that group okay. the frequency should be less when people get older and there will be some 72 to rest okay so the number of people we already have say suppose that range 14 then maybe 18 and uh, adult people are much there 28 then maybe 17 okay. then maybe there should be some decrease 13 then 10 yeah. then maybe 4 this is the number of people now we created <clears throat> that relative frequency okay relative frequency is nothing but the total number of people total frequency is this so if we calculate the number of total people as a n and one frequency is suppose f then relative frequency the formula should be uh, f divided by f okay now, what is the relative frequency for these people, this uh, group? You can see the total calculate this. You can see 14 plus 18 plus 28, then 17, then 13, then 10, then 4, 104, right? Now, if I make one the hundred, then it will be more easy to calculate. So suppose let it decrease some amount. Uh, not seventeen. Okay. Not seventeen. Now calculate three three six and eight eight twelve. I believe it should be hundred.
Yeah. Now, what is the relative frequency from that group? Then is equal to 0 0.1. Yeah. Similarly, here 0 0.18, yeah. 0 0.28, then 0 0.13, 0 0.13, zero point one, zero point zero point zero four. So this is the relative frequency of it. And there is one, another more group you, you should know that's called cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is nothing but adding of previous two uh, numbers. Okay, that is a cumulative that we, if you get, the cumulative distribution is nothing but adding of previous two numbers. So, this would be 0 0.14. Now 0 0.14, 0 0.18 is 0 0.32. Okay, 0 0.32 and 0 0.28 is 0 0.6. Yeah, 0 0.73, 0 0.83, no, 0.86, 0 0.86, 0 0.9, and 1.0. Okay. Now, you sir, already in the, know. Sir, in the third position, it, is, it would be 0 0.5. Here. Yes, sir. 0 0.18, 0 0.18 and uh, 0 0.14 is 0 0.32. 32. 32. 0.32 plus 0 0.28. 28. Okay. That's a 2. Okay. 0 0.6. So cumulative distribution, as you know, because we are adding that all relative frequency, so the total should be one. Okay, the total should be one. Okay, now that easy display that you can see that how many just means the weight in each in every group that have. Okay, you can see that weight that have measured in that category between 21 to 30. Okay, we can also see that where it's increasing and decreasing in that weight. Okay, where the many people comes from one group to another group. You can easily plot the di uh, distribution graph. We will see it today. So there, this is representation, but those are the simple letter we use the advanced yes, sir. Of the, yes sir it should always be one the so one or more it should always be one why it will be more you are nothing but adding that cumulative distribution na? what is the relative uh, frequency it's nothing yeah, yeah. Uh, frequency is nothing but you represented that category in compared to the rest of them okay if rest of the value is 100 that's because it's a simple if it is not 100 then there will be some other value it will be some other value with that but if you sum up all those by using the cumulative frequency okay not that one using the cumulative frequency then Cumulative frequency you are representing is nothing but whole value, na? whole number. What is the maximum? Uh, what is the maximum probability value of a number you can take? When you do the probability, or maybe when you do the <coughs> cumulative fraction, what is the maximum value you can take? That's one. Na? Suppose if this is your whole part, okay, this is its graphical part, okay. We are dividing into four category, maybe one, this is two, this is three, this is four. If you represent that as a whole number and based on this frequency, the whole, we can, how we can represent is one, they, it has some value, say, suppose you can buy naked eye, you can distribute it as a may suppose in that sample space, it take, say, 0 
वन फाइव ओके दिस टू इन टेक जीरो पॉइंट से फोर फाइव हाउ मच इट डन सिक्स ओके देन जीरो पॉइंट इन थ्री से सपोज जीरो पॉइंट वन एंड इन नंबर फोर इट हैज जीरो पॉइंट हाउ मच इट विल डू ट्वेल्व फोर वन फाइव वन सिक्स सेवेन जीरो पॉइंट थ्री राइट सो वी आर डिवाइडिंग दैट सैम्पल स्पेस डिवाइडेड बाय द रेस्ट ऑफ इट सो इट विल हैव सम फ्रैक्शन ऑफ वैल्यूज ना इट शुड नॉट बी मोर देन वन अंडरस्टूड yes sir sir but here uh, the total number of cumulative fraction yes because here the number is 100 for our uh, oh, suitable okay. for our calculation that's why okay. for our naked eye it shows that it is simple but if you calculate with the different number if you go back to the different example the cumulative frequency for any kind of number you are dividing by the total na so what you with the fraction it will give the total number so, should be one so sir if it was 104 instead of 100 so because it's an 100 that's why for a calculation helpful the easy for a calculation it's give that number okay so when you give that divided by that number this is not the exact number it will find right? it will be some less of it because zero uh, if the we take the previous number it will be 104 if we divide it divide 14 divided by 104 it will be less than that value na yeah yes sir then we have what if you sum up then this value should be less and it will be, again when if you sum up then the value will be added to the one right when you represent an whole space in that maximum probabilistic value the value should be one that is the probability yes sir na Yes. What sir. is the probability told us? Told us is the number of possible event divided by the whole event. Okay. So if we divided by the whole event to the number of possible event and we added the sum up, that's the maximum probability. So what will give us the value of one? Na? The probability lies between zero to one. That's we know. We'll see. We will go back to this probability values. Then we'll explain more of it. Okay. It's okay, not one thing. It's nothing but the relative frequency, the cumulative frequency. This for that, you know, the rest we will discuss about it. So. Sometimes we need to plot this. Okay. Now there is some display that people do. Say. suppose one kind of distribution the representation of distribution okay i am not go much deep in it you already know some of it okay one is uh, the frequency distribution of the histogram what we will do in histogram we will nothing but create the bars okay the vertical or the horizontal bars maybe this is one histogram bars this is another histogram bars right this is another histogram bars this is another histogram bars okay so what are the bar represent bar represent nothing but a group okay either so suppose in the previously if we take those values so suppose 0 to 10 group represent that value then 10 to 20 okay then uh sorry the 11 to 20 then 21 to 30 and so on okay so on represent that group and <clears throat> for each group we calculated the total value that is represent say suppose there were the 14 people represent in that group so this uh, bar is represented the frequency of this total value that is the 14 here okay so in that axis we can write one value that's the uh, probabilistic value or maybe the cumulative frequency values okay 
uh, not the community, the frequency values. If we plot some graph here, say what is represents, it is represents 0 0.14 and so on. Yeah. So we does nothing but that represent that each group. Okay. Location in general, uh, the middle point of that bar is nothing but represent that the middle point of your group okay but it's not necessary because the necessary element is what are the bar represent bar represent is nothing but the frequency of a group and the sometimes the axis we can measure based on the uh, uh, sorry bar represented that total people or total amount of unit that present in the group and in that axis we can for our measurement, for a simplicity of measurement, we can simply write the frequency. Why? Because if the normal number may be some, if we get them large value, then it will be hard to explain rather than if we just measure based on its frequency. Right. So uh, the relative frequency is a much better way to represent okay, than the normal frequency table or normal frequency histogram. and height height of the bars are nothing but it depends upon how much you need presented inside of the group okay so that means nothing but how much frequency it occurs that group isn't it if there are if 30 people are falls into that category not the 28 people then the height of the bar will be increased right so more frequency it will have that group, the more height it will consider. And with this nothing, uh, in general, the weight of the frequency for that uh, histogram, it should be evenly spaced for most of the time, but maybe for your, uh, for your data representation, the, if you have the uneven groups, then maybe uneven group can also be measured but that time we use some another advanced techniques rather than that basic histogram okay we mostly uh, for the representation of the percentage sample space that had in uh, different groups we can simply uh, give you that uh, pie chart or that okay the simple pie chart will be represented uh, better than representation of the sample space than that histogram okay so this is one uh, data distribution technique second is in the histogram you can also plot like uh, your frequency histogram table and all okay then next is the uh, bar chart okay you all you also already know about the bar chart it is nothing but for a categorical level you can see for different bar represented different category okay either if we if we base the gender if it is a male or maybe female or maybe others okay those kind of different techniques that you use for representation of uh, categorical variable. We can e also here count and write that frequency here, how many male and female and other are in this table. Okay. Then, uh, count only there is one, as I told you, the pie chart. Pie chart is nothing but it representation that how many percentage of sample space it have okay by each other from that technique you can say different percentage that have they suppose this is having a 35 percentage of the data that it distributed okay maybe this is having the 40 percent of the data it distributed okay and so on if it's 75, then it is 15 and 17. Okay, this is pie chart. Pie chart, more, more, most of the time, there are different categories represented, represented, and we calculate it as a total percentage of distribution. Okay, total per 100 is the total percentage 
and the different percentage that it will take space. Okay. <clears throat> there is one, sometimes you can see that the uh, cross tabular form or the contingency table people can make. Okay, maybe you also have to make that contingency table. Okay. You can unmute and uh, spoke to us rather than type. So it will help you for all of you, all of us. Asis Devedi, do you have mic? Good morning. Yes, morning. Yes, sir. Actually, I'm just uh, telling you, I suggest you actually uh, in the different type of uh, charts like a pie chart, a bar chart, mm. and uh, uh, circle words and uh, histograms. Mm. That's how to decide this type, this type of techniques you use in different uh, particular way. How to decide sir, in a uh, analytical model and analysis of the data. Mm. So most of the time, this kind of technique that bar chart and pie chart, as I'm told you, that bar chart is nothing but when there is categorical variable, you cannot show this into the numerical variable, the continuous variable, right? Bar chart, when you will put that different bar should represent different category. Otherwise, there will be no uh, suitable method that you can put that bar chart. So when there is different category, you can put that bar chart and for every, each and every bar, it can represent the total frequency of it. Clear. Similarly, for the prior pie chart, we most of the time, if the different category in a total sample space for the different category, how many sample space it will be uh, occupied from that sample space as a percentage we can represent in, using the pie chart. Clear. And for that uh, histogram, you already know it is nothing but the frequency plot. Okay. Sir, if you're talking about the different type of learning models, like in ML uh, machine learning, hmm. uh, like classification and regression and uh, logistic regression, different type of regressions. So uh, in these uh, particular models, and it's been, I'm going to analyze that models in a, a basis of pie chart and uh, uh, cycle, that means uh, histogram charts. It is possible or not, sir? Have you, have you seen, I mean, have you did uh, regression and other kind of, uh, representation of regression techniques and other kind of email techniques. Means ha have you done those techniques before? Like different regression or the classification technique. <laughs> No, no, I'm asking My you. Answer. Yes, please tell me, sir. I'm asking that have you, when you, uh, not when you, have you done regression of the classification technique before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, in, uh, during my semester's examination, semester papers in, in uh, MCA. Then, yes. Then I'm asking that in which part did you represent it? Your regression and the classification based on this bar chart and the pie chart. Ji. Have you done did that? No, 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 sir. Then there is no other email techniques would use your pie chart or the pie chart. Okay, pie bar chart and the pie chart is nothing but we are representing different categories. Okay, if you do the EDA part, okay, when you exploratory data analysis that time to represent different data category for representing to uh, your boss or maybe for your understanding that time only we represent data like this okay bar chart and the pie chart okay. for our uh, no oh. memel technique will use those techniques to represent this bar chart or the pie chart because when you do the regression model model is nothing but maximum time you use the continuous data right that the random variable. Yes. Sir. How how you will represent ran random variable in those parts? The, those comes a uh, far longer. Okay. Yes. This is nothing but a simple idea part. Okay. 
after we finish okay, all those techniques then we will move into those parts okay okay yes yes no but thank you sir. yes no problem then there is uh, one another technique that people use okay uh, yes the cumulative data table okay the, or maybe the contingency table or the cumulative data table okay cumulative uh, your contingency table is nothing but when you have suppose there are some more tabular data plus tabular data that you want to represent okay either it's an qualitative data or the quantitative data then there should be some joint distribution okay if there is be some joint distribution of two or more variable then better if we use the cross tabular form rather than the normal tabular form why let's see suppose uh let's create one uh, contingency table suppose there is some mobile uses or maybe internet uses okay we represent based on this gender okay based on this gender there will be some male gender and the female gender the subcategory and sir yes sir which type of data is a uh, uh, qualitative data and quantitative data have you attended the last session no no so sorry sir actually that time um going for exam so if you uh, if you saw the video yes 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 then you should tell why either it's a quality data or quantity data oh, okay. what is quality data You can means if you uh, didn't saw the video, then within the name of its term, you can simply tell is what is qualitative as a quantitative. Quantitative is something you can count on. It's different it came under this category of quant, right? Okay, sir. So quantitative data can be your simple continuous value, can be some frequency values. Because it's not easy as you go much deeper onto it. It's not easy. Like uh, maybe your number can also be represented as a category. Okay. Most of the time. So go by it. What's the, what's an exact uh, based on which scenario how we represent different categorical. Okay. Either it's a based on the value or the based on the measurement. right because your qualitative data can also be categorical variable and can also be represented based on the numbers right as there's a nominal value or the ordinal values but important is which based on method you are representing because nominal value uh, nominal values is nothing but there are um, only way to differentiate rather than the uh, meaning of ordering itself right that's how we represent this is the nominal or the ordinal and ordinal there will be some representation okay some we can do some basic ordering you can tell if there are three uh, ordinal values like uh, suppose some guys from your graduation some guys from a post graduation and some guys from a phd now from this ordinal value category you can have the basic understanding of you can give phd values as the highest priority then the master's one, then the graduation one. This is the representation of the nominal the ordinal value. Now, in ordinal value, there will be some uh, people numbers that comes under the ordinal values. Okay, some numbers will be there. So suppose, so in the it can be a joint distribution also. For uh, and for our simple, if we on, only differentiate based on this value, then there will be your uh, simple nothing but your continuous value in the discrete bits. Okay, because those are the discrete numbers that represented different chain, the different uh, represented different types of people from that group. 
Okay. Uh, so in in your cross tabular form of the contingency table, suppose there will be some uh where if you win some consistency, say suppose some internet users. Okay. In your internet user, we are have some values, suppose some male and the female value who are actively used that or actively non-use. Okay. Suppose 150 male people use that value and suppose 50 female use for yes and for no category, say suppose uh, 50 people in that value and suppose 100 people use. Okay. And there will be some combined value that we may not know. Okay. There is some combined value. Say suppose there are some 200 and maybe some 150. So you can also see those kind of representation. Okay. And from that time, it's better if we put uh, those things into our contingency table. So in this cross tabular form, it will be much better representation and much better classification. And then for your calculation, the rest is up to you. If you do, then you can pivot this table and you can do rest of it. So sometimes if you see the data in that representation, then this is nothing but your cross tabular, the contingency table. Now, there, there is no end. If I, so there will be some, suppose, some frequency diagram. Okay, frequency diagram is nothing but the how many, uh, it's one continuous curve that represented the uh, frequency of each table. Okay. You can see it can represent like this one. Not the normal uh, distribution, uh, sorry, the regression line or the thing. It's nothing but each different frequency where every frequency will be written here. And based on these different nodes that represented your different frequency of it. Okay. And maybe each category or maybe each class it will represent. So this is class A, then this is class B, this is class C, and so on. Okay. And if this is a cumulative frequency, then it will be always like this, or maybe uh, this. Because the maximum cumulative frequency will be there, and the minimum cumulative frequency will be there. The uh, angle of the curve may be different, but otherwise it should be cumulative. Okay. That's why people may use the OGIP diagram. Okay, this is called OGIP diagram, where it represents nothing but some base value here, and then some upper value, and the maximum cumulative frequency. Sometimes people use that OGIP value. Then uh, sometimes people use Pareto diagram. Okay. The Pareto diagram is nothing but the same thing uh, where one category of the two category, which category may be this is one category and maybe this is the second category with the third category. Okay. If there is a total sample space, maybe category A represented the maximum of the sample space. Okay. Category B is the less and C is some other less. Okay. Maybe this one represented, say, suppose 50% of, of your data, then some less value represented in the B and some rest will be the C. We differentiate into that value. This is nothing but the cumulative percentage distribution. Okay. So it was 20, then 40. Okay. And in there, there would be one trend line that represented that how much trend uh, it is distributed, the total trend it is distributed. So suppose 
if this bar is uh, sometimes maybe 50 or 60 percent of the data represented then the bar uh, the trend line will start from that bar and maybe second will be represented much better than the c1 you can see b and c are nothing but the almost all not the almost but most of the equal distribution okay if a we can consider as a 60 then b will be your um, 25 15 right then the trend line will if we plot the trend line will be goes like this okay there will be some frequency and the in that there will be the 100 okay if this represented the most of the frequency table then this one then this one okay it is a very less value for this c category then your paragraph will goes like this okay. this trend line you can see the trend line is nothing but represented uh, that how much category it will belong to okay when for in my life i never use those kind of diagram for my analysis OD or the Pareto diagram but there are some representation you may need for your uh, purposes that's why i am uh, giving those things okay then uh, after the Pareto diagram some kind of scatter plot or the time plot we will do in this when we uh, you already know how some kind of different data in this how we represent it in the scatter plot some time series analysis where there will be some up and down trend line okay we will do those those things we will discuss when we will deeply in uh, study in that uh what is called that correlations and the regressions okay and when we study the time series then we will study all those kind of things skip those things uh if you want you can uh just go a little bit study otherwise those things are not much dependent most of the things we will again discuss in this EDA part when we will do uh, in this mode for the univariate and the bivariate analysis that time how we you can represent all those kind of things and you can also know that nowadays some automated generative algorithms are there and some models also there that can easily build each and every basic representation of your data rather than you have to manually use either your python visual libraries or maybe other bi libraries okay. even nowadays some kind of automated generative it can automatically represent a basic represent of your data where you can see all those bar graph and the pie chart are there okay we will again when we deeply analyze all those things then we will again see this okay now let's talk about the important feature that's called the measurement of our central tendency okay so when we represent one data distribution okay either it's an uh, suppose it's a large number of measurements so if we tend to cluster that measurement then there should be one value that represents that entire cluster okay for that time we in general used that mean value or the median value or was the mode value the three types of central the three types of technique that can represent it for a ten, uh, central tendency of an each clusters okay so rather than have that huge chunk of cluster it's better to use the one single value or maybe one typical representation to represent that entire meaning of an clusters okay now as the arithmetic mean or the mean you can already you already know that uh, 
what is the value uh, formula to calculate the mean it's nothing but you can count that total number divided by that is total frequency okay so always all those uh, you already know that value we can adding and the summing up together that can we can uh, that value we can easily create it as a mean so all those interval values or the ratio values okay those type of values we can easily calculated means for that and represented one mean values for those categories okay for mean calculation the rule should be that exact all those data values should be unique okay uh, no, no. all those entire cluster values should have the unique mean otherwise if the the mean will be repeated then there will be some collapse of the miss calculation sometimes we also get that the different kind of uh, overlapped mean value so for that time we easily represented based on this probabilistic curve rather than the basic mean calculation so it will be much helpful then we will come to see by that but for now for a basic mean calculation we can do is nothing but the sum of all value divided by the total number okay this is mean. So, for if we calculate it for an entire population, the uh, represented the population based on this symbol mu, and simple formula is the total uh, the total observed uh, total observed value divided by the number of total observations. Okay. For our sample space, uh, that time we can represent it as small x. In that sample, the total observable divided by the total observations. Okay. Now in this arithmetic mean, there is one major disadvantage is if there is some fluctuation. Fluctuation means, suppose there will be some lower number. If your value has some value, like suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 9, okay, 3, if this is your entire uh, sample space and there is one value, suppose 99. You can see for that heavily large value, your representation of that cluster will be deferred, right? So arithmetic mean always affected by the large or maybe the small value that already presented in your sample space. Okay. So this is one mega drawback of using that arithmetic mean. And for that, we have the other techniques and some uh, median value will give us one more advantages than we calculated that mean of it. And also the mode also give us one advantages in the mean of it. So nowadays, as the if you have some uh, dis data discrepancy, then it is better to represent your median value than the mean value, right? But always remember that in the end, it depends upon your requirement and your business idea. Okay. If you need to represent based on this arithmetic mean, then definitely you have to do some basic statistical method then you can apply your mean so it will give you more meaning okay rather than simply just calculate it and uh, represent your mean value so this is simple mean value simple mean is uh, our arithmetic mean okay where sum and number but there are uh, two 
more techniques of mean that you can calculate. Suppose you have some group data. Okay. For your group data, then we can calculate it that the uh, group mean nothing but that frequency and that mean value of this group data. So you can calculate it from it. We'll see one example. And there is one term that's called the weighted mean. Weighted mean is nothing but the weight of the observation that we see and multiplied by the value of the observation divided by the total weight, we we'll get the weighted mean. Okay. Now first we see that uh, what is called the group mean. Okay. I'm not giving any example for the mean as you already know those things. Okay. For your group mean, <clears throat> the uh, formula would be your frequency divided by your um, mean value of that group and uh, so multiply by this and divided by the total number of observation. Okay. So if there are some groups, suppose. For group one, seventy five to eighty four. Okay. Those are the different group values. Now, four. Yes. There are some different groups, some frequency values. So suppose uh, this one helps two, then these have one, then eleven, then These will have some suppose fifteen. These thirteen. Will have some value of five, seven, and it's a lower value. So suppose eight. This is a total frequency. Okay. Some uh. middle value of it okay what is the middle value of that value of that group 75 and 84 we can that 79.5 right the middle value of this one midpoint is it correct or not 75 is uh, 84 is 9 9 uh, 10 the middle value is yes 79.5 Similarly, for this one, it will be 89.5, right? For this one, it will be 89.5. For there, um, 109.5, right? And so on. This is 119.5. One, one, then, this is 129.5. Now this is 139.5. Now if we can change that, if it's raised, then we cannot consider the midpoint. Better we write, suppose, back to 154, then this is 149.5. Yeah, this is, we can, we have the midpoint. Now, 
we can calculate the mean. How? We can multiply that frequency into midpoint. Okay. If you multiply that value, what it will give? If you have calculator, you can start, or maybe in mobile. Suppose two into seventy nine point five, what it will give you? One sixty, one sixty minus one, one fifty nine. Clear. Similarly, for that value, how much it will give you? Five multiply by eighty nine point five. Calculator. Okay. Now five multiplied by eighty nine point five. Four four point. Seven point five. Hmm. Okay. Now for the next one, eleven multiplied by ninety nine point five. You can tell me so it will be helpful. Eleven into ninety nine point five. One zero nine four point five. Right, fifteen multiply by one zero nine point five one six four two point five okay then uh thirteen multiplied by one one nine point five sir one four eight one one nine uh where one one yes one one nine okay okay sir. actually i'm using mouse now that's why it's i'm struggling to write uh 13 into one one nine point five because that midpoint no? midpoint is one one five times one 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 point five so one five five three point five then Five multiplied by one two nine point five six four seven point five eleven multiplied by one three nine point five so one five three four five and the last is Eight into one four nine point five divided one one nine six one one nine six. Now summing up that value, it will gives us summing up that value divided by the our total frequency. Okay, total frequency is let's count five seven eight thirteen sixteen. 21, uh, 22 and 8, 0, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. Okay. Now, weighted mean is here, our total number divided by 70. Okay. What is our total number? Say one five nine plus seven point five plus one zero. How are they born on the year? Then one six four two point five. Okay. Then one five five three point five plus six four seven point five. Plus one five three four point eight plus one nine nine six. Stop. They were on a phone. What are going to
9075 divided by 70. So 129.64 is your total total group win. Yeah. If you have data represented as that format, group me group value, then if you want to create that group mean, the group mean is nothing but this one. Okay, 129.64. Yeah. And another is another form people can ask at the weighted mean. Weighted mean is suppose if in your entire year of your school, okay, you have some uh, like suppose you have homework, okay, you have some assignments. Okay, you have some quizzes, some midterm values in the final exam. Now, different category has some weights that calculate into your total percentage of your values. That time we can use that weighted mean. Okay, when the exact the mean is nothing but the computed from this each data value with a weight that refl reflects its importance in any final scenario. That time we can calculate it as weighted means. Okay. So for weighted means, you can write like say suppose for weighted mean, the formula is nothing but the weight and that exact value, that mean value of this exact category that we will with and uh, divided by the total. Okay, now we should create one simple example. Say, uh, suppose in your in your uh, so maybe one year, suppose ten percent depends on your homework. Clear. Plus, suppose uh, fifteen percent depend on your quiz. Okay. Next, suppose. Uh, maybe mid semester it depends some weight of twenty five percent. Okay. And this is the total ten fifteen this is the twenty five twenty five and fifty. Let's calculate that fifty percent. Is your final assessment? Okay. This is represented your total weights now. Suppose your homework uh, contains has some value like say suppose one is 40, 50, then next is some 60, uh, 30, 40, and 50. Clear. Now what is the mean of your homework value? Summer, summer work. It will be some five four seven ninety nine one three one two zero one two zero two two zero two seventy two seventy divided by six. But I think forty five. Hmm, it's forty five. Okay, this is your mean value of homework. Right, I was writing like this. Uh, then suppose your quiz has. Some values say suppose 50, then 60, then 70, 20, uh, 50, suppose 40, 30, uh, 80. Okay, what is the average of it? It's 5, 6, 1, 1, 10, 1, 8, 0. 100. 400, na? Sir, 50 hmm. Yes, sir, 400. Okay. 400 divided by... 8. eight. Sir, 8. Uh, eight. 50. Okay. Then, the 50 it is the mean point. Okay. And mid-semester, there is one mid-semester we can calculate and let's say suppose 65 and suppose final assessment, you get around 90. There. Now, how you can calculate the weighted mean? I already 
get that every mean point of its value. Okay, this we have already done. Okay, now multiplied by the weight. What is that weight? The 10%. So 10% of 45. What will you give us? 4.5, right? 15% of 50. It is 15% uh, is a 5 and the 7, 7. 5, 7.5, I guess. 5. Yes, sir. Mm. Then 25% uh, of the mid. What is the 25% of the 65? It will be 30. 33.32.5, uh, I guess. If I am not wrong. 32.5 plus 50% uh, of the 90. That is 45. Okay. So sometimes. Yes. The value can be represented in the mean of the uh, percentage. Sometimes this here in that percentage, people can give you some kind of uh, your numbers. Okay, the weight number. Suppose uh, two of a homework. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, the mid semester value twenty five percent of mid semester. I think sixteen point two five. Sixteen point maybe. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I am not calculating it. That's right. It may be sixteen point two five. Okay. The total it and you will get that mean. Okay. Now suppose in that percentage value, sometimes it can provide some weights. Okay. Some two of homework. Okay. So maybe three of quiz. It can be give give you some represent like that, and that time just get the total value and divide it by the total weights. Okay, maybe uh, one of one into forty five. Okay, if I if you wanna then uh, say keep it simple to one into fifty plus um, two into say suppose sixty five. And say three into suppose ninety. Then what will be the total divided by these to the five and seven divided by seven and it will give you the mean. Yeah, this is how we calculated. If, Sir, can you repeat this portion? So sometimes if it's not give you as a percentage, okay, percentage if I give you then. It will be helpful for us, so we do not have to divide it. That it's already gives us the exact proportion of it. Okay, maybe instead of percentage, people can be provided you on this form of weights. Okay, how many weights it will be? Then some uh, whole number you can provide you. So that time, the same things we did that for our summation, we multiplied with those weights and divided by the total weights. Okay based on this formula. Okay, sir. Okay. Simple. So this is how we calculate it. If uh, it depends upon how we keep the data. Okay. Some if I if we give some based on some frequency of words or maybe some root value, we can calculate it. Okay, mean now mean always remember that mean arithmetic mean always differs when there is hugely large value uh, present. Maybe some, that's called the outliers. Either it's an, some hugely large value represented or maybe some uh, hugely small value represented. Then your arithmetic mean will be differ. That's why we uh, came to the next technique, which is called the median value. Median value, as you already know. Sir, in the previous one, uh, mm -hmm. after uh, 4.5, 7.5, 16.25, and the sum in the add will be the result of the will be the result weight. of the mean. Yes. Okay. 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 Because that's a percentage. You do not need to divide it. We are already uh, dividing is by the hundred, na? We are not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why. So if if, if there uh, doesn't give a percentage, then we should uh, divide, and that's why you uh, divide the total weights. Yes. Sir. 
Yes. Maybe uh, in form of some uh, decimal representation, you can also give you. If see that the decimal representation is uh, overall the cumulative frequency or not. If it's a cumulative one, then nothing but it's only gives the percentage here as the same thing I told you when give you the graphical representation. Then you nothing but just multiply of it and uh, sum it up total. So you give the total uh, weighted mean of it. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Then uh, next, we may go for the median value. Okay. Median is the most uh, common represent, uh, commonly used for our daily purposes as median is nothing but it's represented that medium value of your entire representation. So either if you have the large value or maybe if we have the uh, smallest value, so your median value won't differ that much. So better representation of an entire cluster can be uh, represented in form of median and it'll be more suitable than that mean. Okay, so median you will know it is nothing but your 58th percentile of your data. Percentile is nothing but if you consider your data as a 100 percentile, entire data, then as the middle 15 percentile is nothing but your midpoint of your data. Okay, if you sort it from the ascending to the descending order, then uh, the middle point of it. Okay, and also for uh, you already know that uh, sometimes for our outlier treatments, okay. So when you have huge large of data and for our treating or removing some outliers, we only consider that uh, from 25 percentile to 75 percentile of your data and rest of it, we easily ignored one and we only consider this percentile for as our main data. So the outliers easily removed from that part. Okay. So when we plot that block box plot that time in the CDA part, that time we will discuss about is how we can uh, remove those different outliers and how we can read different like it's a box plot and the other part. As you already know for my uh, sessions of uh, Matplotlib and other, I, as I told you, told you that the basic in this basic ADA part, how you can read that uh, box plot and the other all, how we can remove those kind of outlier data. Okay. Maybe later we we'll again talk about it. Yeah. So for uh, median data that the midpoint we can consider if n is your total value, uh, total observation number, then it should be n plus one by two. That observation. Okay. That observation values. For odd value, you can easily say it's nothing but the middle point. For the even value, it's uh, either you can take that mean of the upper medium layer or the uh, upper boundary and the lower boundary. You can take those two values as a mean. Why? Because suppose if you have one, two, four, three, five, you can easily pick this one as your median value or if you have one, two, four, six, seven, nine, then for our medium, uh, for our median value, we can take that midpoint and this is your upper boundary level, this is your lower boundary level. We can take these two and take as a mean and we can tell that median value is a five. Yeah, this is for odd. This was even amount of observations. Okay, and also for the median value, there is uh, one formula. I remember uh, there will be some lower limit and the plus plus this kind of if I remember, I need to Google it. L plus H uh, and some kind of total number of observation minus of 
some cumulative frequency. I need to change that median formula for data. Yes. L plus N by 2 minus C. N plus N by 2 minus M. This is for broad value. Okay. These things you will not remember as for your uh, any library, like this a Python library or maybe this library, all those things. Uh, Excel, you can simply add this function, just call it, you will give that upper value and the lower value and it will give you the whole median value. Okay. This L is nothing but represented your, you will know the lower value. Okay. H is represented nothing but your uh, height or maybe the width of your median class. Okay. F is nothing but your frequency of a class. Width of your median class. Okay. N is nothing but you all you know the number of observation. Number of observations, or maybe in terms of frequency, if I consider, and C is nothing but your cumulative frequency. If there is one group, say suppose uh, say 1 to 10, then 11 to uh, 20, then suppose 21 to 30, uh, 31 to 40, 41 to 50. Okay, if this is the group, and we need, if we need to calculate that uh, median of this group, Okay, suppose same value can take say to seven. Yeah, suppose uh, ten, uh, three, one, ten, three, ten, ten, twenty, twenty. Okay, so the lower value. Okay, the total is our uh, 23. Then the width age we can represent it as a width. Width is our 9. Okay. Frequency is We are representing from 1 to 10. The frequency should be 10 here in every group. Okay. Sir? Hmm. Sir, why H is 9? H is 9. I am considered as the weight of it. I mean, I am also confused in the which one is represented as a, as a frequency. Okay. If H is 9, then frequency should be uh, 2 divided by 23. It will be a lot of a calculation. Okay. There should be one frequency table should be there. Just leave it. Then main thing is after that, you have to put that formula, then you will calculate it. But as I told you, I never uh, do those kind of things because in Excel or maybe in Python, you can already know, just give you that 
the entire group number. Okay. In the next session, I will show you the codes, uh, how you can calculate it. Okay. Give you the exact group frequency and then you can uh, just give you the limit from that function. You can easily calculate the median. Okay. So man, that's why manually we do not do this. Okay, from that uh, formula and all, because frequency is a uh, two seven ten three. That's what the frequency. Two seven ten three. Yes, frequency is the frequency and uh... frequency. Yes, this one. Individual two seven. Mm, individual two seven. Three, ten three. Individually, this is the frequency yes. and one, then I have to ten, uh, ten. sum up. Uh, for that formula, I have to sum up all and then calculate it. And manual calculator is yes, sir. It will take time. That's why I'm ignoring yes, the manual calculation. Right, you are right. I am thinking about if we put frequency in here, it's nothing but two divided by uh, twenty three, and then calculate all this frequency from that percentage. And for the cumulative one, then we can adding up the summing or summing up. Then we have that part. That's why it will. It's better if we do not you uh, if we use the scores rather than this manual technique. Leave it. Uh, in the, when we start the scoring part uh, from this uh, statistic analysis, that time I will show you uh, for that Excel or maybe in the, both form. I will uh, show you in the Excel also and in the Python also how, how you can calculate those things. Okay. It is better we do not do this manually. And I, okay. I did one mistake. One mistake is this F is not represent frequency. Okay. Because we are calculating the median, now, right? This will be nothing but calculated uh, whole in for the entire table. But I am I am currently considering this median of it. For me now is good. So F should be represent some uh, value or frequency value of that middle class. If I am not wrong. see one example if it is given yes this is the value hmm. this is the example okay some group 140 150 159 this is the exact same thing then yes this one the frequency distribution as you already know that nine we did here is an seven and there will be some the a value of f should be yes the frequency of the median class, the middle one. Middle one is 18, means that one here. Okay. That's why uh, it was in So if the value of F should be that uh, class, that frequency value. Right. That's why uh, we can, then we can consider it as a trend. So L is nothing but your lower limit. Okay, H is the frequency get the height, and F is considered as the frequency of your median class. Okay, this would be frequency of your median class, right? Then N is your total value that is number of 23 that's here uh, what did uh, people did here l plus one with you one median class lower limit 145 the n is your total uh with the probably into root 2051 okay minus they multiplied by cf that's why i leave it separate and the frequency of your middle class is 18. Right? That's why F is taken as 8. Clear? 
clear i guess yes sir okay uh, okay and last is the mode okay mode you already know when you have a data set normal data set where the data maybe the data point occurs multiple time okay so mode what it will take it will take nothing but your highest frequency of your data okay. so, so most of the time for the calculation of the, we we do using the basic codes otherwise mode calculation you have to uh, sort based on its distribution uh, based on its frequency distribution and then the maximum frequency occurs, that value you can consider as a mode. Okay. Sometimes in your data value can have one mode. Sometimes in your data value can have multiple mode, like two mode. Sometimes you can data have no modes. Okay. If you have some data like some garbage types of data, say 9.3, 17.2, Okay, 22.3, 5.4, 3.1. You can easily tell that value as no mode. Okay, because every single representation of its own modes. Okay, so maybe if you have value like say 9.5, some better value say 7.2, 8.2. Seven point three, nine point five, two point three. You can easily tell from that that this value and this value occur two times, so we can consider that one as a node. Okay. Most of the time, in the frequency distribution, uh, which value occurs, uh, and the if you have the discrete value. That time we can calculate the modes, otherwise, mode is not needed. Where most of the time, when we have the continuous uh, or maybe some continuous discrete value, we can easily calculate the median one. Okay, sometimes your data can have multi, multi node, say, suppose 9.5, 8.1, 2.3, 4.1. Say 5.7, 9.5. You can consider here where 9.5 and uh, 8.1 is your multi mode value. Most of the time, in uh, mode is nothing but we group that value and count that is okay. So mode is nothing but you can say as a representation of our grouping count. Okay. Okay. Mode is nothing but representation of grouping grouping count. Then uh, median. Better we can write like if we have say suppose mean value, mean value will represent as a of summing of your data. Okay. Because you are nothing but summing of your data and take that mean of it. So represent uh, one value can represent your entire cluster. Okay. And for median, we generally do is but already isn't it we ordered the data and take that middle point of it or maybe sorting and mode we nothing but we group that value and count it frequency there uh, in general there was one formula that can represent it both mean minus median is equal to three into because 
mean minus median three times of mean minus median is equal to mean minus mode. You can see that formula sometimes in the internet. So from that point, people can say that um, yes, your mode point uh, mean to mode point is more further away than mean to median point. Why we will see today in this different acutosis plot for mode calculation we simply do uh, those things we can never do in this we can simply use this basic formulas either it's an excel or a. you can have the simple uh, if you use excel then there is the mode if i remember mode multiply uh, mode mul mode ml that function can easily calculate your mode functionalities okay for your percentile there is one simple uh, function called percentile you can calculate that percentile of it. Okay. Now, this is the basic data. Uh, we represented the central tendency of the data. Now, for your data dispersion, we can, uh, most of the time, we represented using the variance and the standard deviation. But there is other some basic techniques called percentile and the interquartile range. Okay, so uh, when we start the coding part, that time I will uh, show you those codes. Okay, for calculating those kind of things. Okay, that day. Now. If we consider that data dispersal okay so when this range of data set how each and every data points is differentiated from one to another and for that dispersion we generally uh, calculated or so using uh, most of the time is our uh, standard deviation the variance but also we can also represent it based on d0 uh, percentile value okay or maybe in your interquartile range value okay so one basic technique that people use is range 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 is nothing but you can calculate minimum value point to maximum value point that is your entire data range that people used to do that uh, years earlier but nowadays we don't use that but if you, if you want to create uh, a basic uh, data dispersion then basically you can simply do this calculation and give you the data your entire data range okay but we don't do that this is the most better way to represent is your percentile Percentile is uh, if you to sort your entire data, first you sort the data, then from below, how many uh, percentage above your data may fall. That even calculated as your percentile. So if you have the, there is two important from the percentile is your Q1 and the Q2, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Q1 is, is represented as nothing but your 25 percentile of your data. Okay, so 25 percentile means 25 percent of your observation found as your total percentile rank or the total observation rank. Okay, from your entire data dispersion, the 25% of your observation found under this category. Okay, this is uh, Q1 or the 25 percentile. Q2 is your 50 percentile, is nothing but your 50 observe 50 percent of your observation or the 50 observe under the 50th value of your observation found into that category. 
and Q3 is calculated as your 75 percentile. Okay, so 75 percent of your data found into that category. And in that point, people created that IQ or Intel Quartile range. Intel Quartile range is your data found from Q3 percentile to Q1 percentile. Okay, this is considered as your Intel Quartile range. Sometimes we use the IQ or Intel Quartile range to remove the outliers. So we will ignore the other data point that falls under uh, either the greater than the Q3 category and the lower than the Q1 category. Okay, that value uh, we can remove as outlier that time. And this is range you can take as an interquartile range. So data, uh, sometimes your, if your data can be sensitive to outliers, then we can easily remove those things using this IQR formula. Okay. Now, next point comes is a variance. Variance, you know. Uh, now, variance, we can calculate it as dispersion from your one dispersion of your each and every single point of data from its, uh, its mean point of our data. So from if we have one cluster of data and we consider the mean point of it, then from each of the single observation of the data is differs from that mean point, we can calculate it as the variance of your data. Okay. And similarly, as for this mean part, we can also have the formula for our population variance and the samples variance. Now, for our population variance, if mu is the mean of your population, then we can calculate the variance of the by sigma square equal to Each and every data point differs from your population mean square divided by your total number of observations. Okay. This is the very, uh, and you can also write as a summation of, say, suppose from zeroth observation to. So we how uh, we squared that uh, in that formula we squared that value because some data point can be larger to our mean also, okay. and so just for our calculation as those if we, those part will be negative then the value can be removed so that's why we squared that part so summing up that entire value and gave gives uh, get our variance point. This is the formula for our. Um, the population variance and this is for our population variance for our sample for sample variance we will write this uh, code as if xi is your sample point and for sample mean we can write as x dash or maybe capital x dash divided by square that value divided by n minus one why we write n minus one when we study the degree of freedom that time we call you that why in this sample space we write n minus one instead of n and similarly it goes from i to zero to until this sample variance <coughs> and population variance as you can see as that symbol therefore a sample variance we can represent as a s square okay. not the sigma here and this is variance for the standard deviation is nothing but the scaling part standard deviation we 
do root of our entire value. So for our population sample variance, similarly we can write as a xi minus mu divided by root of n and for sample standard deviation we can write nothing but x minus x dash divided by root minus one with nothing but the scale that value so if square gives us a large number so scale it it will give us a much uh, better prominent number than this variance that's why this uh, same things nothing but the scale of it now why this why why we will use n and why we use n minus one we will discuss in the or in this part of the degree of freedom nothing but in this n is nothing but the total number of observation okay that time we will see why there is one why we less than one number and x is nothing but your random variable okay and random variable means it's not uh, that uh, it will take a random variable as in, in the algebra we thought that it will take any value. Uh, it's not like that. Here in this uh, statistical sense, the rand, uh, x represented that the random variable where it will take any value from this sample space from the sample space which differs either it's a real uh, from an entire real, real number okay from this entire real number of sample space it uh, the random value will take any each and every value from that point okay. so this is some uh, there is one term also people sometimes people ask what is coefficient of uh coefficient of variation coefficient of variation is nothing but the standard deviation is represented the standard deviation is represented in terms of mean okay so how large the standard deviation in comparison of your mean will gives you the coefficient of variation Either it's a, or maybe for your population, it's nothing but your sigma divided by mu into 100. Okay, this is the percentage you will get. And for your sample space, it's nothing but x divided by x bar into 100. Okay, this is the coefficient of variance. And one point when you uh, when you have the, because the parse is less important when most of the time we will use the standard normal distribution curve where the mean point we can consider as a zero at that time you can see that coefficient of variation will be undefined. If your mean becomes zero, then coefficient of variation is a one Okay. So if most of the time that's why we uh, our real life scenario we do not use this coefficient of variation we simply use the variation okay but some maybe people ask if you have need to calculate the coefficient of variation that time your data point or maybe your mean value should be your greater than zero otherwise you will give that undefined result so most of the most of the time you know uh, real life we do not use this coefficient of variance now as still part, we uh, understand that the distribution of your data and the dispersion of your data. So from distribution of our data, we can measure the exact skewness we can find in our distribution and the exact kurtosis we can find in our distribution. So there are three types of skewness we generally encounter uh, when you put the distribution. Okay. So in this skewness, we can in general measure the 
safe of your data okay based on the distribution either is a symmetric distribution or maybe asymmetry of your frequency distribution that time we can calculate it in this skewness so if your data represented like this say, Okay, then your data can be called as the left skewed data. Okay, if your data is like this, or some bigger value here on the left hand side. then you can call it as your right skewed data okay left skewed call as also called as a negative skewness right skewed call as a positive skew okay but <laughs> most of the time we generally have to work with if your data has no skew okay it should not be negative it should not be positive skew Okay. The data should be perfectly balanced, right? and that uh, that distribution in general called as your normal distribution. Okay. So your when your skew is zero, that means your data should be look like this. Okay, that time skewness is zero. Okay. If you plot the distribution curve that time, this negative skew is definitely look like this. And your positive skewed data will be look like this. Okay. But if you have the perfectly zero skewed data, or that time your data will be perfect, like your bell cell curve, okay, like your normal distribution. Now you can uh, you can also if you see this gar curve, you can consider like if you have negative skewed data, some data will be uh, lowest data will be represented here, some highest data will be represented here. So mean not will be situated in the highest peak one, mean can be represented at that point. Why? Because as it's a negative skewed, so for some larger amount of value, your uh, data point is shifted. Okay. It not exactly desired value that you will get. Okay. So mean point can be represented at that point when for your right skewed curve your mean can be represented at that point because of some hugely large values. Okay. Your mean curve. Okay. Mean, mean it's point represented can be... nearby origin. That's negative and uh... At distance, uh, equal by the mm -hmm. origin that positive and the central is your normal Same. distribution. Mm -hmm. Because uh, most of the time, what we do, uh, your real life scenario, the data can be most of the time you represent in this either you will get negative in the positive format. But when we do our basic uh, analysis in this EDA part, that time we had to convert those curves into our SD card. You already know if you did that, I guess. <clears throat> so most of the time we have received from that format on the that format negative or the positive skew, but we will convert it into our standard normal distribution. Okay. But uh, 
if you uh, consider the median point of your data, then as you can see that if this is your data uh, distribution, then median point will be something like here, the midpoint of our data. Okay, here also, if you consider this is our entire percentile of, so midpoint will be something like here. Clear. And maybe mode will be the most of the frequently happened data, the most peak data here. So maybe here can we have the mode value. Similarly, here can we have this mode value. But in our normal distribution, the median, because it's an evenly, uh, evenly spread data, so the median and the mean point always will be the same line as well as the mode value. Okay. If this if this has the mode value, then it will be situated in this entire single line. Okay. So it's a symmetric curve. That's why it's represented our most of uh, most of the time we represent it using this normal distribution as our symmetric curve. Okay. It has a long, you can simply tell it has a long tail. Some characters you can trace a long tail. Uh, then peak. Then short tail. Okay. Similarly, it has a first your very thick, first your short or very thick tail. Then peak then our long end and positive skew. There are some values like uh, some formulas that you can calculate the skewness of it. But uh, more as similarly, we use this code to calculate the skewness that time but one general formula is something like uh, skewness is equal to something like 3 into mean minus median divided by the standard deviation Sometimes, but we use these basic codes to represent, uh, calculate the skewness of it. But we, uh, when we plot in the CDA part, that time the skewness, if your distribution has some skew, then the skewness value automatically represented with this character feature. And we easily have to remove that uh, skewness, then convert it into our basic normal distribution or maybe standard normal distribution curve. Okay. This uh, for skewness is nothing but the uh, we usually measure the safe of our data okay the, either is your data as a symmetry or the symmetric of a data that time we can calculate using this uh, skewness and the second is the kurtosis kurtosis is nothing but we measure the thickness of our data okay if it's an uh, if your data has a flat distribution that time we can see and on the flat distribution curve or maybe it can called as a platy kurti. For normal distribution, that time we have a evenly bell shaped curve, and we can call it as a meso kurti or normal distribution. And if you have a peak distributed curve, okay, that time we get as a lepto kurti curve. Okay. Either it's a positive value or the negative or maybe the flat value. And for a normal distribution, the Kurtosis value is around zero. Same thing, but that time uh, here,
this will be can be considered as your hat distribution okay hat distribution where it has some negative value negative kurtosis values there and for our normal distribution curve as it says the evenly bell shaped curve okay and for our positive or with a peak value is the highest peak that means your data dispersion will be very small okay This is uh, negative, this is mesocortic, and this is platycortic. Sometimes uh, the distribution like your, uh, your logistic or maybe the exponential distribution, okay. Laplace distribution, that kind of, those kind of distribution can be considered in your platycortic. But a normal binomial distribution, standard normal curve, will be considered as a mesocortic. Okay. This is kurtosis. So in similarly, in our when we do the EDA, that time you can see that maybe some uh, you have some open source website that can also calculate your basic. Uh, Kurtosis part, otherwise, in our when we do the EDA, that time when we plot this basic data point, you can see either we have some positive or the negative kurtosis value or the positive or the negative uh, skewness value. And if we have, if we need see that kind of data discrepancy, that time we need to convert it into a normal distribution. Okay, and maybe we can use this basic standard normal distribution formula to convert it into a standard normal distribution curve and we can then do our basic analysis. Okay. Clear, I guess. <laughs> okay. Next is, uh, today is late. So I'll not cover it. Next, next day, I will start to uh, start talking about the basic uh, bias theorem, a bear theorem, and the probabilistic distribution, okay. either the Poisson distribution or binomial distribution. Next day, I will start talking about on those talk on those topics. Okay. If you have question, you can ask. Kurtosis we generally depends on the standard deviation point of end. Okay, because if you are in this kurtosis, we are nothing but measuring the data dispersion from one data point to each other. Okay. Negative uh, when we get this flat karma, that time the possible reason you will find that the data point we will have is a very less number of data. Okay. That time we can have the negative point of value. Okay. In general, if you're uh, in the uh, law of large number it says if you have data point is more than thirty or maybe fifty, if it's more than that point, then your data can easily become into your stand, uh, normal distribution. Okay. Okay, then uh, I am ending uh, sessions here for today. Next day, next week, we will go into those probabilistic distribution. Okay, okay sir. sir.